Hello everyone, welcome back to another Sword Slinger dev vlog. In this dev vlog, I'm just going to talk about some of the things that I've been working on, um, some of the ways I've responded to your feedback, and also I'll show you some of the development tools that I created for myself to make my job a little bit easier. All right, so let's dive right into it. So first thing you'll notice is there is a new level select screen here. And the interesting thing about this level select screen is that it actually shows you a mini map of the level right here. And then it also shows you the enemy types that you're going to encounter here. So I can click through and you can see that it's uh, updating the mini map and updating the enemies. And if I click on one that has a shield enemy, you can see that right there. So we got our new enemy type showing right there. We go to the next one, we can see we had two of the normal one and one of the shield one. So that's just there to make it easier for you to tell at a glance what the level is going to be like. Um, and in the future, these will be locked. So you'll have to complete, let's say, you know, you're just starting the game. You have to complete level one before you can go to level two. But once you've unlocked it by completing it, then you can go back and replay any levels you want. I'm still contemplating a way to give a rating to the player depending on how well they have completed the level. The problem is, in this game, I think one of its strengths is that each level can be solved in a wide variety of ways. There's not a single solution to every puzzle. There are potentially dozens of solutions, right? And I don't want to impose a limit on that freedom. Um, and so I'm just, I'm just keeping that in mind when I'm considering adding a rating system because I don't want to shoehorn people into doing, you know, something that I want them to do in a very particular way. So I'm still brainstorming ideas for how I could give a score, but I don't want to compromise that aspect of the game. And by all means, if you have feedback or suggestions on what I could do for a rating system, um, that would be much appreciated. One of the other things that I have been working on is I'm continuing to brainstorm and prototype new triggers and actions. And one of the interesting actions that came out of my prototyping was a grapple hook. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and show you what that looks like. You can see that a grapple shoots out of the sword and attached to the terrain, and then the sword um, hangs on that grapple for a little bit, redirects its motion in accordance with the physics, and all that good stuff. So I thought that this grapple could be interesting. It could have a, a very specific use that I think would be helpful. And this is what I have in mind when I'm iterating on the grapple hook. So my intention with the grapple is to give the player a tool where you can redirect the sword, meaning you can change the direction of the sword without having to use so many behaviors. So the typical way that you'd redirect a sword that's in flight, right, is you would just throw on another throw action and choose a different direction. The problem with that is that that has the potential to eat up an entire behavior block, right? So you can imagine if I'm creating a new behavior block here and all I wanted to do is redirect the sword, okay? I might put in a timer here and then put in a, a throw to redirect it, right? And that eats up a whole um, behavior block. What this does is this almost has a sort of built-in timer with this duration here. But if you use the grapple in like this way, for instance, you can see that I can redirect the direction of the sword, but that's all wrapped up in a single action. So I don't have to use a trigger and an action to achieve this result. I can do it within the action itself. And then I can also change this duration to, to control the amount of redirection that I'm getting. Um, so that's the use that I saw with this. There's a couple of problems with the grapple right now that I am trying to figure out how to address. One of those problems being that you'll notice the sword loses kind of a lot of energy here. It doesn't seem like it's, you know, getting that much oomph out of the grapple. Um, and the other option is that I don't even know if the grapple in its current state is going to adequately replace a throw action because of the fact that it loses a lot of energy. So I'm considering tweaking the grapple behavior a little bit to see if I can preserve or add energy to the sword. 
um, to really make it seem like a useful option. Because I certainly don't want it to be just a wasted action. I want it to have a very distinct use, at least in some scenarios. While I'm here, I'm also going to talk about a quality of life change that I made. So I had a bunch of people play test the game on Reddit. Um, I will leave a link in the description if you want to read through that, if you're interested in seeing that. Um, it's up on the screen right now, just scrolling by. And there was a lot of good feedback. One of the pieces of feedback that I kept seeing or kept getting from um, the comments and elsewhere is that it was hard to tell what a lot of the actions did. I think there was one comment that um, the player didn't know what the skip trigger did. Uh, it wasn't clear to them. And I agree. It's not clear in some cases what the actions and triggers do. So what I've done is I've added a little information bubble to each action and trigger here. And when you click on that information bubble, it just pops this sort of modal-ish dialogue here that has a short description that describes it. So the start trigger says it's provided automatically in the first behavior block and it immediately executes the connected action. If we go to the skip, it has somewhat of a similar, immediately executes the connected action. If I do the skip action, it should say immediately executes the next behavior block. So those are just there um, in case you want to reference them. My hope is that most of the actions and triggers, um, you'll be able to deduce their behavior just by experimenting with them in game. But in the case that you're having a difficulty figuring something out or in case the game does not do a great job of describing and showing what an action does, um, this will be here for your reference. So that should help smooth things out when you're crafting behavior blocks, especially when you're starting out with the game. Um, so I think that's a, that's a good change there. All right, and then for the end of the devlog, I'm just gonna show you some of the tools that I built to help make my job a little easier as I am adding more levels. Um, this first one is a level organizer. So let me first describe how I have my levels set up. They're all contained within this scenes level directory here. And they are just numbered in order. So we have level zero, of course, arrays start at zero. We all know that. And it goes all the way to level 15, at least for now. These are in order. The game will read this directory and load up all of these levels in that order, and that's the order that you get to play them in. The obvious problem is if I want to make a tweak, if I want to add a level or change the position of the level in this list, I have to rename a bunch of stuff, right? So if I wanted to move level two to the level one spot, I would have to rename this to something like a level one temp, rename level one to level two, and then rename that level one temp to level one. Kind of a big process, and you can imagine that that would actually be more complex. Let's say if I wanted to move the last level into the first slot, I don't know why I'd do that, but let's say I did want to do that, I would have to rename the following 14 or 15 levels, whatever it is. So that's a lot of work. So I created a tool that can do that for me. So I'm gonna start this up. And I started up just by running this scene. It's the same low resolution as the game, but that's okay. Um, and in here, I can select a level that I want to select. So let's use that example of moving the 15th level or the 16th level rather up to uh, level zero. So I can just click move up here. And now level 15 has become the first spot. And if I click the save button, um, what will happen is if we go and look at the changes here, you can see that all these levels have been actually renamed. I don't know if it's going to be super clear here, um, but you can see they, have all, they all have diffs, and that's because they were all renamed accordingly. The content of the levels hasn't changed, just their name has. And so that makes it really easy. Now, actually, let me show you this. So if I move this all the way back down to the original order and click Save, we should be able to see all those diffs go away because now we're back to the original configuration that we had. So that just makes my life a little bit easier when I'm restructuring and reordering levels. It doesn't make it so cumbersome. And then the last thing I'll show you is this minimap generator tool. Now I'll run it, but it doesn't really have much to show. So I'll go ahead and run this. It just shows a black screen. And then I get a bunch of OKs printed out. And I'll show you the code here. So this minimap generator, uh, what it does is it generates the minimap images that you saw on the level select screen. So 
the first thing it does is it actually deletes all of the existing minimaps. I didn't want to deal with like updates and checking if the file exists before overwriting it and everything. So I just figured it's easiest just to delete everything and then regenerate them. So what this does is this iterates over all of the levels, which are represented by a level model. Um, and it will draw the tiles, which is just as simple as iterating over all of the tiles in the tile map. And then it will write to an image. So this image here is actually created up here. Minimap equals new image. This is a built-in Godot object. And I'm just setting the pixel at the corresponding tile position. So I'm mapping tiles to pixels um, to white here. And then what I do is I draw enemies. And the enemies are just two block high, two pixel high red squares. Um, just so that you can uh, expression of where they are in the level. And then the sword is drawn too, which is just a very simple pixel drawing. It's like a, a little cross shape that um, gets drawn at the appropriate position. Um, and that's all it does. And it saves, the way it saves is it uses the level ID, which is a GUID. And um, so that way I don't have to worry about order in this instance. Every level has a unique ID and it just saves to unique id.png and uh, that's really all it does so whenever i modify a level or update a level i can just run this tool by clicking the run scene button it deletes all the minimaps regenerates them and then i should be able to commit them there's no changes here in the git diff because none of the minimaps have changed but yeah that's it uh, as a reminder there is a demo of this game available now check out the steam and itch.io links in the description below be sure to wishlist if you want to be notified when the game is fully released and i'll see you in the next devlog